Hey, Kitch here. Welcome back to the Forgotten Coast, episode 8, Finishing the Storm Rock Slides. Uh, this is an episode I've been excited to get out to everyone for a while now. And I want to start off by saying that I had originally built in about, and I have discussed this in previous episodes, and I built in about five weeks or so uh, buffer where I recorded ahead of time, got some videos ready, and I had about five videos already pre-scheduled uh, to come out before, uh, I, had, I guess, ahead of, ahead of where I was actually at in the park. And I've already used up all that buffer, so now I am recording this only a week before it's coming out. And I'm really glad I built that buffer in. Uh, just playing some other games, you know, sometimes taking a break from playing a coaster can be helpful in speeding up the, or I guess assisting the creative process and making sure you kind of put together a product that you're happy with. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to burn out from the, from the park. It's just kind of funny how quickly I went through that, that extra buffer I built for myself. So uh, the good news though, is I can pretty confidently say now that the season one Storm Rock Island will be done in 10 episodes. Uh, this is episode 8. I've got 9 pretty much done, and I'm pretty confident that it will only take me about one more to finish the whole thing, so that's really exciting news. Um, and I think you'll see at the end of this episode that it's, it's you'll really start to see kind of the vision I was going for from the beginning, uh, what this, how I want this to look with the, the jagged rock and uh, and all that. So, what I'm working on right here is uh, the evacuation points for the uh, trap door slide. Anytime, and I guess this is kind of a realism here uh, aspect here. Uh, anytime you have a slide that were were to go upwards, I guess how this one is, where you have that looping element in it, uh, you need an evacuation point because there are times, and I've seen this in real life. It's it's pretty interesting. Uh, when a rider, usually a light, someone who's really borderline lightweight, they usually have a weight restriction. Uh, I think it's around like a hundred pounds, typically. But if you're, if you're, sometimes if you're on that borderline and you're only like about 105, 110 pounds, like a, you know, maybe like a, a little kid or something, uh, you get this. You get what happens is they don't actually make it over the loop, so they end up kind of stalling out uh, in the middle of the slide. And that's why they have these evacuation points, so uh, the lifeguards can go down and open up the door uh, and let them out. And I also, after doing some research, realized they have them actually at the top of the loops too, which I thought was kind of odd, because you'd think if you got stuck at the top of the loop, you could just kind of scoot yourself down the slide. But I guess if someone were to panic, they still have to have a way to get them out and rescue them. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm working on here. Uh, I just used a different color shape to kind of represent the, the, I guess, door of sorts. So each of these will need a access walkway uh, to, I guess, to get to them and to get to, uh, to and from them, uh, which is kind of what I'm working on here. And I don't actually, uh, two of these go into the stairs up to the slide one of them will have to and I, I don't actually have this will not be finished in this episode but it ha I have to build a walkway down to the deck level uh, for the one for the one which you'll see uh, but just using this grading piece here I think it looks very industrial very very I guess serviceable and not themed and that's kind of what I, what I'm going for here something that's you know, clearly meant more for function and not for looks. Uh, so just using the metal fences, just but kind of everything toned black to sort of blend in with the with the rock black rock structure in the background. Uh, this one up here at the highest point on the slide or of the loop, it was kind of interesting because I had to figure out how to get this down without making it look too awkward and what I ended up doing is kind of bringing it right to the side of the rock here and just kind of meeting up right with the stairway, the queue line. And this works pretty well I think because it saves me 
and I guess in real life, the engineers and uh, designers from having to construct and make all those stairs that go a separate stairway all the way down to the to the deck level. They can just link it right up with the stairs and make sure they have a gate, a locked gate on there for employees only, and then that'll work. So the next thing that I move into is the supports for these slides. And I'm not gonna have all this on camera, so I'm gonna start uh, and we're gonna see kind of the general process which we've seen before, how I start to lay these out, and then we're gonna cut to a, a real time, but it's not really a real time, but it's not, it's non sped up footage. Uh, just kind of looking at the finished product of the supports and I can, you can see exactly kind of what they look like and I can talk more about them, but I, these took me a while, so I cut out, cut out most of the, the time of just doing the same thing over and over. So the first step whenever I, you know, when you do this, because it's, it's, it's a little tricky because you're building this around a themed, you know, in this case, the jagged rock structure. Uh, so the first thing I did is I just laid out kind of the columns where, I, where I'm going to put them. Um, and then from there, you go on with the actual supports to the slides themselves. And I tried to uh, put columns in the center of the curved helic helical elements here, because uh, that's typically how they would do this in real life. They have the columns in the center, and then they have uh, the different yokes and steel beams coming off this center column connecting to the slide. Uh, I think they do that, one, I'm guessing from a structural standpoint, but also I think it's just less columns and they can use the same the same column for multiple yokes, they call them, uh, which is kind of what I'm building right here. That would be considered a yoke. So working around the rock structure is not easy. Um, and one thing I end up doing is at the uh, found at the I guess, I guess the base of the columns, I build kind of like a foundation of sorts, just so it doesn't look like the column is just going straight through the rock. Um, I wanted it to look like it has a clear anchor point where it's you know a clear structure that's not just thematic um, and you'll see those when we jump to the real time here uh, which is coming up but one thing to always remember if you're working around like a thematic element don't get sold on your I guess on what you've built it's really important to be able to understand that you might have to change what you've already built a lot of a lot of times People don't want to change things because they've already put a lot of time into it. And in this case, if I'm working on a support and you know some of the rocks in the way, I can always change uh, the rock structure to fit around the support. You know, you never have to have anything locked in. So here's this real time-ish section uh, of the video. And you can see those uh, kind of concrete walled footer areas. I've got three of them, well, four or five of them there. You can see that are where the columns are actually anchoring down into. So this is the finished support layout. I've got all the supports on the slides. I think I'd, I think it looks pretty realistic and it looks like they could be supported um, how they are. And you know, once once you get the supports in there, then it's just a matter of going, going back and filling in all the gaps with the rocks. So here's the finished evacuation points with my archer for scale down there. Um, and the rock work, I'm calling it rock work, the, the black jagged rock. Uh, that one, I, most of that I'm gonna have cut out, but you'll see me starting that at the end of the episode. Uh, before we move into that, we have to do a little bit of work on the queue line, the stairs, uh, and the platform at the top of the tower too. Uh, so starting with the stairs, the first thing I wanted to do was put a wooden texture on the top of these. I wanted it to feel realistic. It doesn't, you know, in real life, they these stairs, they have to have a non-slip resistant um, surface just for what exactly what you think it would be. They don't want guests slipping and falling on the wet stairs. So usually it will be some sort of like wood material and a lot of times they'll have like some sort of like textured rough surface um, on the pool decks themselves too and pool floors, they do the same thing. A lot of times, um, they have they have criteria for uh, roughness factor and uh, slip resistant materials they use. But aside from that, I just wanted it to look a little more rustic, realistic. And the black temple pieces were are great for building the layout of the stairs and planning it. 
but in terms of the actual detail and the realism of the stairs itself, I don't think they were quite cutting it. So going back through with this wood, all these wooden pieces that I've been doing so often in this series so far, uh, I use, I've used the same pieces so, uh, so many times it feels like. Uh, but sometimes I do that on purpose because I'm trying to keep the materials consistent uh, in an area. So I'm trying to match the same rope uh, stair setup I've got here with what I have in, over by the Beacon Racers just to keep it consistent. Uh, maybe in a different area of Forgotten Coast Park I could use a different uh, stair texture design uh, but it, it, it won't stand out as much for, for here it'll be for this area it'll be consistent uh, and that's kind of the idea so once you have one down it's a lot of copy pasting uh, and then just kind of fit making it fit your needs or whatever the stair is uh, you see I can I reversed a bunch of those planks there uh, like we've talked about to, to avoid that repetition and another trick that I did here which I think is something to keep in mind is just having that little gap between the planks. It just makes it look a little uh, different. I think different is good. You want it. You want that slight difference in colors and textures, and, and that's kind of how it is in real life too. That usually have those little slight gaps in between each of the planks. Sometimes you can fit a toe through them. Um, I don't think you're supposed to fit a toe through them because I think they have, uh, you know, they don't want it to be a tripping hazard, but kind of that that feeling when you're climbing up the stairs and it almost feels like you could fall through the stairway the stairs even though you logically know that's not going to happen but I don't know that's a that's something that always goes through my mind but moving on up here to the top of the platform I've filled in the rest of the stairs at this point with the same materials and now we're starting the work up here uh, this one actually I've kind of fiddled with this for a long time tried a bunch of different things and you'll see what I eventually end up going with but the really the main challenge was the fact that you've got four slides up here and you've got guests queuing up coming up the stairs and in a busy day you might have a long line and you need to have some sort of way to kind of separate where the guests are going if, if everyone's waiting in line for the same slide you have to have a way for the guests who only want to go on the not popular slide to still be able to go on that without waiting for the rest of the guests. So the idea was the stairway is pretty wide so everyone can kind of go up the stairs together. Um, I guess the lifeguards could kind of bring people to one side for a certain slide but once you get up to the top uh, I was trying to figure out a way to kind of separate each slide and I believe what I ended up doing is I figured the Trapdoor slide would be the most popular. It's the newest type of slide. It's the most thrilling. Uh, maybe with the steep drop slide being number two, but so I kind of I, I end up giving that its own little line, I guess, kind of like on a roller coaster when they have like the front car line, which is like a separate little queue line within the queue line. Uh, that's kind of what I end up going for here, and then it could just be assumed there could be signs the lifeguards could be telling you, you know, keep keep left up the stairs for this slide, keep to the right for these others. So before I get to that though, I start with just more of the same assets up here. We have the same pillar pieces with the ropes. And the nice thing is the contrast here between the wooden kind of rustic-y uh, textures with the black, very dark, uh, sharp rock. So it's subtle, but it, it, it it makes it look realistic and separates the uh, the two things. So this is my first attempt. I, I first I wanted to make a little mini queue line for every single one of these. Uh, so I started off with these barrier pieces. The barriers are really nice, uh, both in function in the game because they can actually they block the guests from moving in a uh, wherever you put them. Uh, in this case, their guests aren't walking up here, uh, the in-game guests. So. They don't serve that purpose, but they just look, they look like queue, queue line, you know, banisters. Like you see these all the time, the ones that can just like move around and uh, reconfigure on the fly. Sometimes <laughs> in queue lines, people can even like start, the guests can start picking them up and moving them around and then you get yelled at because you're not supposed to be messing with them. But anyway, 
So I, <laughs> they were, it was working out pretty well until I got to this corner, and it just was too narrow, and I needed to fit like, I mean, only like a pencil could have fit through the queue line. It was so thin. So I ended up just having to kind of scrap it all because there was just no way. It was just, it just didn't make total sense, and I, I, I figured there was a better way to do it. So I believe, yeah, so I scrapped a bunch of it and I just went with this one for the trapdoor slide. Um, kind of its own separate line and then the rest can kind of funnel in and pick the slide that they're, they're interested in. So at the end of this episode, all of these slides will be pretty much completely finished. And the last thing that we're going to move into in the last couple episodes is just that final plaza uh, at the base of these slides, which I should say, do not, well, they do have the name, but I haven't really finalized a name yet, and I, I'm going to make some sort of sign, which is not uh, in this episode. Uh, so I'm not going to reveal them, but each slide will kind of have a name, it's kind of in a similar theme. Uh, this right here is actually my attempt at a scale. Now each one of these, every trapdoor slide you ever go on is... Well, at least the ones that have the loop, the looping, uh, I guess, component of it. Uh, so there's two types of trapdoor slides. So some of them just drop and you just go down the slide path to the bottom. Others have, which is the one in this park that I'm making, have this looping element where you actually go in this loop and you raise up. You go down and then you go back up. Uh, and the weight is an important factor in making sure that the guests will actually make it around the loop. So if you ever go on a slide like that, they will always have a scale at the top, and you have to be weighed, uh, which is always interesting to see what to see what your weight is. Because um, I, me personally, I never weigh myself, so it's it's always interesting to when you <laughs> either that or the doctor's office or something when you get weighed. I'm always like, oh, that's what I weigh. Okay, uh, but that was my attempt at the scale. I tried to just cover up part of it to make it look more correct in shape. Um, and then these lights here at the top of these slides, just to give the signal to the guests when it's time to go down, and then you have the lifeguard attendant too to be monitoring everything. Uh, I try to give shade to all the lifeguards up here because I expect it would probably be a hot climate. Um, now this sign says Slush Rush on it, and that is from uh, my Frozen Coasters Park, and I'm gonna uh, remake signs for every water slide, but I'm not, I haven't done that yet. It'll probably be something I do off camera at the end. Uh, and so they'll be in the final product, but for now you get the idea of kind of what what it will look like just with the appropriate slide and colors and etc so last finishing touches up here on the deck little rope just to close off the top uh, if needed and I believe I do put a lifeguard slide attendant up here as well just to monitor uh, where the guests are flowing uh, moving to if they're keeping left to the trapdoor slide or right to the the rest of the slides. Uh, just trying to add a few little assets here. I think I was gonna add a towel and I ended up just getting rid of it, but here again with the shade, you know, lifeguards have to sit up here for long periods of time, so it's good to give them uh, shade. So the last thing, and this is something that I only have a maybe a minute or so of, uh, and then the exciting part for you guys is you get to see the finished product here in the cinematics, but I start working on the rock structure here that it's basically covers the entire slide complex and you can see what I'm doing I just simply take each of these temple pieces it's just the same triangular temple piece that's the only one we have that's this pointy uh, and I just keep moving it around until until it looks right and it looks natural um, and trying to make sure it's not conflicting with anything and you guys will see the final uh, final cinematics here so thank you I'll see you guys in the next one. Like and subscribe. Talk to you soon.